Hey, everybody. Well, we're going to continue where we were talking about. Ooh, I'm sweating the day. We're going to talk about um, the transitions of life and specifically how do you get from one phase of life to the next phase and how do you do it seamlessly? Remember I said yesterday how you transition out of one place is going to determine how you do when you get into the next place that you're going. And so you don't want to leave where you are raggedy. You don't want to be doing things in a jacked up manner because how you step out, it sees that you're sowing and you're going to reap a harvest from that. And you want to make sure that you're reaping the right harvest, right? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And we all, you know, we're pretty open and honest about our lives and times where we jack things up and, you know, and then we had to eat the fruit of it. And then, you know, when we step back and we say, what happened? How did I get here? then the Lord will remind us, well, in 19, whatever, you did this and this. And so now here's the fruit of that. And so then you have to chalk it up and be a big girl and a big boy and walk through. This is where you grab Isaiah, where it says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount right. up on wings like an evil eagle. They'll run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Some things you get yourself into, you'll be able to mount up like a, on wings like an eagle. Other things you're going to get through, because see, some of these things you put yourself in, you're going to have to run and, and, and what not, is get it? Weary. not get weary, walk and, and not faint. faint. And there's many situations that we have had to walk through and not faint and just swallow it because we couldn't pray for crop failure. We sowed those seeds. So we then had to turn around and reap that harvest. So we're telling you from experience, make sure that how you're doing, where you are, the job that you're working, the school that you're in, the ministry that you're in, the business that you're in, the family that you're in, whatever it is, the relationship that you're in, make sure that you're sowing seeds today that you're going to welcome the harvest for it tomorrow. And so do you want to say something? Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, a lot, well, sometimes the same keys that you use to lock those doors that you just came out of are the same keys you're going to need to open the doors that you're trying to get into. That's good. And so it's so important that you, first of all, use those keys wisely. You know, in the Bible, it talks about uh, deacons. Hmm. And in most churches, deacons are people who carry the keys. They're the opener and closers of doors. They, they do all the uh, behind the scenes work. And when you get keys, keys represent authority. Mm -hmm. And so God is giving you the authority on how you're going to transition out of a place and how you're going to transition, transition into a place. And it's not up to him. It's right. completely up to us. Right. We have full control over, I don't care how they've done you or how you've been treated, how you respond to it is completely on you. And we've had many opportunities to fail in these areas, just like we've had many opportunities to do well. And so we've missed it and we've done it right. Yeah. And I'm just going to be honest with you, the missing it may feel like it was the easiest way at the time, but it's usually the worst harvest later. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do things really well. And so we talked yesterday about five ways, you know, I said, I would give you all five ways to manage these different seasons in your life. And the first one was to know that your steps have been ordered by God. Remember I said, what God orders, he's putting a demand on that. You go someplace to eat and they give you a jacked up order. You don't take that order. What do you do? You send it back. Well, the same with God. He's ordered something from your life and he has an expectation that what he ordered is what he's going to have out of your life. Psalms 37 and 23 says the steps of a good man have been ordered by God. In other words, in all of these transitions, in all of these seasons that you find yourself in, God has you. He knows what he's doing in your life. So you don't have to worry about any season that you may have to live through. God's got you. Remember, if he's taking care, he said, fear not, little flock, whatever your lot, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the keys to the kingdom. But he also said, if I'm going to take care of the sparrow, I'm going to take care of you. He even went as far as saying, you can't even count the number of hairs on your head. So why are you worrying? I know how many hairs are in your head. So stop worrying. Or not I, in your head. Or, or not in your head. <laughs> Yeah. I've ordered your steps is what God is saying. And so steps represent, I said it yesterday, it represents 
um, those times in your life and those, those seasons. Every season has a step and each step represents a period of time of waiting. And I said that you can't go on step one, I mean, step three until you've done step one and two. And so you wanna make sure that you're not skipping any steps, that you're going through the process so that you'll be perfect and entire, one wanting nothing. nothing. But, but steps also represent progress. And, you know, a lot of times people think steps need to be huge leaps. But he said, this is a walk. We walk by faith, which means there are individual steps. And sometimes those steps are bigger and sometimes they're baby steps. But nevertheless, they're movement towards your next place. And we, the Bible says, don't despise small beginnings, nor despise small steps. Steps should be valued. They should be uh, praised. They should be celebrated because just think about it. You thank God for a person you didn't cuss out because of the ways you used to cuss out. That's a huge step. That's a huge step. And so you have to realize when God is taking you from one place to another, a lot of times where he's taking you from, it's like a rocket. As a rocket goes up higher and higher, there are certain things that just fall off of it because it doesn't need it to get to that next level. Right. And when you understand- right. Or it's too heavy. It's too heavy. To go as high as God is trying to take you. Right. So there's certain things that's gonna have to fall off of you to get to that next level in God that you're looking for. There's certain people that's gonna have to be released. They don't have to go. In order to get to that next level. Yeah. There's certain habits you're gonna have to quit and there's certain habits you're gonna have to pick up to get to that next level. So understand transition is not just um, position. It's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual, it's it's habit. It's all of that to get to that next level. You know, I love what Ecclesiastes says. There's a time and season for everything. Yeah, we read that yesterday, that's good. What does that mean? There's going to be transition. You know, one of the things about living, and I said this, said this in the Midwest before, the thing about living in the Midwest is you know how to transition because our seasons are never the same. Mm -hmm. You know how to live, how to dress for cold. Right. You know how to dress for fall. You know how to dress for the summer, most of y'all. And you know how to dress for the spring. And so because you know you should not be wearing a parker in the summer, just like you know you shouldn't be wearing shorts in the winter, you know how to dress for that transition in time. And as much as some of us complain about it, all of us prepare for it. That's true. So what does that mean? You have to prepare for the season that you're going into. Right now, everybody's selling winter coats here in Wisconsin. They're on sale. You can get them because it is time for you to get ready for that season. Right. So in this season in your life, you have to prepare yourself for the next season, the transition, and where you're going. Absolutely. And we said there's going to be difficult days, no matter what season you find yourself in, no matter what step you're standing on, there are going to be challenges to every season. But remember, there are moments. You don't define a moment by your entire, your life by an entire, you don't define your entire life by a moment in time. We said, don't throw out the baby with the bath water. The other thing that you have to do, you got to manage your thoughts and your emotions as you're going through these transitions of life. You got to control your thoughts. If you don't <clears throat> begin to think, you'll begin to think that everything else, everybody around you is the problem. The job is the problem. The church is the problem. Your family's the problem. Your spouse is the problem. But you have to keep things in their proper perspective and understand that you are the one going through the transition. You know, remember when our kids were uh, shifting from adolescence to adulthood, young, adulthood, young yeah. adult, and they were going through all of these changes. And we were we were like, I was like this when you were born and I'm not going to change. And you're the one going through all of these emotional changes and you're looking at me like something's wrong with me. No. You something's going on inside of you, so don't blame me because right. you're in a place of transition. And let me, so, let me ask you a question What is worse, the terrible twos or the terrible teens? I think they're about the same, you know, because that's a huge transition in kids, right? But a lot of times that can be the I think it's the terrible teens because the terrible twos you can still discipline, you can manage them, yeah. you can manage them. No. Oh, yes, you're going to do it. But when you're dealing with teens, 
and and young adults, they thought or think, not only do I know it all, but I know way more than you. Right, right. So you're the one going through the transition like a terrible team, right. you know, and so you got to go through the transitions of life without blame shifting. You know, look at yourself, put the mirror on you and let God talk to you, you know, because it's important that you realize that you've got to embrace the change and then get yourself in check. Deal with your thoughts and harness the way you're thinking and stop thinking, you know, the way that you do so that you can manage the season that you're in well. When it becomes everybody else's fault, then that's a problem. And you're not going through these transitions. You're not going to transition into where you are in the right way. But always putting the mirror on you, always looking at yourself is critical. You know, <clears throat> I was thinking about just transition on how we had to transition, how we thought about when it came to our kids, because, you know, the Bible says children obey your parents. But then it says adults honor your parents. So once they got to a certain age, they didn't have to obey us anymore. They had to honor us. And if you, we didn't understand that, that we don't have that same kind of authority in their lives, we had to, uh, we would have messed up our relationship. And we had to transition just like they had to transition. We had to transition and understand that we don't get to make all the decisions for them anymore. We don't have as much say so in their life anymore. We don't have as much. Um, I, I don't want to say influence, but yet our influence did for a season drop because, again, they were going more with what they thought their friends and what media was saying versus somebody who's lived that life already, who's a vet at 15, who's a vet at 20, you know. Um, but we had to transition our thinking and our uh, approach to how we dealt with our children because that was a transition for us as well. It wasn't just them, it was for us as well. So you also have to have faith in yourself. You know, when you're going through these transitions, you gotta believe in yourself no matter what you're thinking no matter what you're doing you got to believe in yourself and so because you're going to have a lot of self-doubt as you're going as you're about to take these steps you're gonna have a lot of self-doubt trying to figure out you know is this the right thing am i qualified for the next step you know and so where you currently are the goal remember i said yesterday is to be the best version of you that you can be so that you can eliminate all of the self-doubt that you might have. It's like, okay, I'm going to perfect my craft, whatever that craft might be. I'm going to perfect it where I am right now. So then that will give me the opportunity to be able to move to the next level with a little bit of ease. I don't have to push myself. And then as I'm going, be dominated by the fear of failure before I get there. Because trust me, at every level that you get at, there's going to be somebody that's going to be on that level moving and shaking. And if you're not confident in who you are, it'll leave you feeling like, OK, I'm boo boo the fool. I'm not you know, I ain't about nothing. But remember what we talked about when Skip said every level that you get on, you're going to have to start at the bottom and work your way up to the top of that level. That what was once the floor becomes the ceiling to the next dimension. But when you get up on that dimension when you get up to that next level it's really important to remember then what becomes a ceiling is now the floor. is now the floor right and so and you'll keep going through that that those phases and those transitions but making the best you the best version of you that you can is really critical and not being intimidated by all of the ballers that are all around you but saying i'm good enough to be here i worked hard enough to get here you know my i was faithful i was committed to being so i have to have faith in myself yeah i remember uh when we first started pastoring and uh i wasn't confident in my ability to teach so M pastor melba would teach with me I think for the first almost year, first couple of years, first year or two, she would teach with me. We were tag team and we got very good at tag team teaching. And then she, we had gotten to a place where she said, I'm not helping you I'm anymore. I'm not helping you anymore. I just started transitioning myself back because he didn't need me like he did in the, in the early stages. Cause I had had many years of, of experience in the ministry and public speaking. Right. I, I had only been used to speaking to youth cause I was a youth pastor at the previous church. I was at, but, but when she began to step back, I had to put on my big boy pants and say, 
I got this. I can handle this. Now, mind you, I didn't take off. I was still kind of There's shaky. a lot of stumbling. Right. I was still kind of shaky. But then after a season of continually doing it, every Making every mistakes. Oh my it was so bad with nervous. my wife. It was so bad with my wife that she used to have cue cards that she would put up while I was teaching. Uh, too many ebonics. No more anums. <laughs> Wipe your face. <laughs> Wipe, all, all this she was coaching me from the stands while I was teaching. Right, and the room would be packed with people, but I would have my little signs out in front because what's happening, he's entered into a new dimension. This is again, why it's so critical to have right. people who love you and who can see where you are. You gotta be able to, uh, willing to expose yourself to somebody right. so that the people that you expose yourself to, you know, they love you, they have your best interest at heart and they will walk with you and help get you where you're supposed to be. It's so important. And, and let me say this to you. Her doing it, I understood that she loved me and it was to make me better. Right. But it wasn't always comfortable because there were times he would be like <laughs> Because I'm I'm in I'm in a flow and I'm using some, some ebonics and she's going, Hey, too many ebonics. Right. And I'm like, what? I can't say and I'm no more. Right. Because then later what I'm, we would do. I'm is, fixing it. Right. But then we, we would put his messages on the radio and he would hear himself speaking on the radio sounding like a knucklehead, you know, and I'm like, you got to speak better than what you're speaking. You know how to use the English language. Use it well. And I'm not downgrading Ebonics because it has its place. But when you're trying to speak and you're trying to speak well and you're growing and developing, there's some things that you have got to share it off as you're going into the next phase. And that's what I'm saying. Don't hold on to anything that is trying. If somebody's trying, something's trying to make you better, make you stronger, make you better at your craft. Don't fight. Well, this is just how I am. Well, you're not going to grow. You're not going to grow. Yeah. And the whole issue is the steps that you're on, the transition that you're in, it's designed to help you grow. So where you are, God is saying, max out this step. Learn all you can. Right. Be the best version of you that you can be so that when you get to the next level, it's just going to get gooder and gooder and gooder. The Bible talks about, and I know that that's Ebonics, gooder Where, and gooder and gooder. Which, where's my flashcard? Too many hey, Ebonics. Gooder and gooder and gooder. <laughs> and so what, what's happening? He's taking you, the Bible calls it, from one degree of glory to the next. And that's what God wants to see. He wants to see you advancing. The Bible says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And what does that mean? I get confident when I renew my mind in the fact that I can do this. Right. I can transition to that next level when I renew my mind and thinking that I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm qualified by God. I'm justified and I'm qualified by him. Mm -hmm. I can stand here because if I wasn't supposed to be here, he wouldn't have put me here. That's right. And that's the place you have to get confidence in you. And the fact that if I wasn't supposed to be here, I wouldn't have gotten the door. Right. But the fact that they let you in, let you know that you're supposed I to be in. Right. Now you may start off as a little fish in a big pond, but you keep doing what you're supposed to do. You keep bettering yourself. You keep upgrading your thinking. You stay connected to God and hear his voice on what you should say, how you should move, how you should operate. You soon will become the big fish and it'll be a little pond to you. Right. Until you until it's time to transition to the next pond. That's you know, it. Thomas Melton said this, and I thought that this was really powerful, that it's that metamorphosis, the caterpillar into the butterfly kind of a thing. Exactly. And you think about that metamorphosis that everybody goes through to thank you, Thomas, for that, it, that metamorphosis. Yeah, that everybody goes through. So you start out it, as what? As a caterpillar. Right. Crawling on the ground, crawling, you eating, know, eating on a low level, eating on a low level <clears throat> where people can squash you, step on you. Predators can come at you. All of that. You're out there. You're green. You know, right. you're doing your thing and you just inching along, inching along. And then what happens? Then you start sensing in yourself that it's time for a transition. And what is that transition? Now I've got to start covering myself. For what reason? So that I can begin to cocoon myself 
What's happening? I'm beginning to develop into somebody or something else. That's where God is setting you apart. Those backside of the desert experiences right. when nobody right. knows where you are. Nobody knows what's going on with you. Nobody, nobody knows you. Nobody sees your grind. Nobody cares about who you are. Nobody, nobody knows anything about you. They don't see the work that you're putting in. You right. know, Skip and um, E.T. were talking about the grind of life. Nobody understands that. Nobody can see that. But then one day, all that you've been investing in yourself, it begins to unveil out of this cocoon because while you're in that cocoon, you know, you're just hanging. You're right. just there. Right. You're not doing, you know, on the outside. But but in that cocoon, you're dealing with yourself. You're dealing with yourself. You're dealing with your flaws. You're dealing with your insecurities. You're dealing with um, your ego that you may not be as great as you think you are. So I got to put in the work so I can be as great as I think I am. Yeah, there's a coming out. You're coming out of who you used to be. And you're beginning to transition into who you are and all of the elements on the outside. None of the, you know, people on the outside looking up, you see a cocoon hanging from a tree branch. You think it's just hanging there. It ain't doing nothing. Most people think it's dead. Right. Most people think it's dead it's and will dead. cut it off or, or whatever. But they don't realize that there's life on the inside of that cocoon right. and that life is transformative. It's changing right. something. I mean, a complete metamorphosis, like turning it into an entirely different being. That's what happens when you take your life and you position your life with God, you listen to him, you follow everything that God is telling you to follow. Eventually what's gonna happen? You gonna fly away. You're gonna be a beautiful, you're gonna transition into a beautiful butterfly and people are gonna be looking like, wow, Look, look, the Bible talks about Jesus being publicly endorsed, that God publicly endorsed the ministry of Jesus. He publicly endorsed him. He got up. You know, we've been today is election day. Y'all get out and vote. But we've been uh, watching all of these people endorsing these people endorse. The Bible says that God publicly endorse the ministry of Jesus. And that's what happens when you follow the transitions and the stages of life that God has called you to be in. Yeah. Ooh, this is good stuff. But it's real important, first of all, you got to begin to deal with you. Because there's parts of you that can't go to that next level that you got to get rid of. Some of them secret problems you're dealing with, some of them uh, emotional issues that you're dealing with. One of the things that uh, I always think, again, I'm a sports guy, I always think about guys who play sports. Most great sports guys are even tempered. Mm -hmm. Very even tempered. They don't have emotional highs or emotional lows. They stay the same. So it doesn't matter how, how you react or what you do. It all depends on who they are and where they are. And so you have to get to a place that you control your emotions and your emotions don't control you. Because when you're in that wilderness or when you're in that cocoon dealing with you, you can get emotional like, oh, nobody cares and nobody's thinking about me and how come I'm always the forgotten one? How come I'm not on that level? How come? How, 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 how? When the reality of it is you're going to get there if you stay there. But here's the thing. You got to make sure your mouth is right during that time. Mm -hmm. You cannot speak yourself out of a place that God is trying to elevate you to. You don't want to. You can. You can speak well, yourself out of it. Right. You, you don't, don't want, want to do to. that. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're saying things that align with what God has said about you. We're out of time. I want to say something to what I said about the Ebonics because people are chiming in about Ebonics. I speak Ebonics. I have no issue whatsoever with speaking Ebonics. But when you're talking about moving who you are and what you're doing on a global platform, you've got to be mindful. Yes, you've got to be relatable. No doubt about that to everybody. But Paul said, I become all things to all men so that I can win some. That's what Paul said. And so it's really important to us. Now, this is the DNA of our relationship. We want to be cross-cultural. And to be cross-cultural, there's some things that we've got to be mindful of. And so that's why I just said to give you some context, I have no problem whatsoever with Ebonics. We talk it. You, you've heard us using it on here. You're, we're true to our culture. We're not trying to deny who we are, where we come from. I'm, I'm, if for those of you that are in Milwaukee, I was born and raised in 53206. I get it. But what I'm saying is moving yourself into a space 
where you want to be able to be received by every nation, every tribe, every tongue, it's going to be important that you watch your tongue for that to happen. And so that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying change who you are in any means. I'm just saying, make sure that when you articulate, that you articulate well enough that anybody can hear what you have to say. And what you're saying is not being confused. You have to be able to be bilingual. Or, or trilingual, however many languages we're you in speak. a pluralistic society, right. and you've got to speak in a pluralistic way. So you have to be able to speak to the educated, the, un the, the right. street brother, the uh, the wealthy sister. You got to be able to speak to all of them, everybody. And so you have to know if that's who you're called right. to. Speak to your audience, right? And at the time we were speaking to our audience, we were trying to expand our radio ministry. So I had to be able to speak to everybody. Right, taking and it so, global. And so all it was was a retraining and, and what I learned then I'm doing now. Right. And so it's just a part of me now. And so it wasn't that she was saying, you you, you taking your black out. Oh, right. I'm extra right. black. Right, right. Put that black I'm, away. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like 1202. <laughs> right. I'm two minutes past no, midnight black. we love the black. We got no <laughs> right. problem with the black. All right. But anyway, right. God bless you all. This is Fresh Baked Man Alive here on Tuesday morning. Our desire is to build your life and your faith so that you can show up in the world being the best version of you that you can be. God's hand is on your life and there are transitions that he wants to take you to and he wants you to go you wants you to go through every one of them smoothly. This is Skip and Melvin Henderson. We love you guys. We'll talk are, to you. Are we going to develop the faith in the believer? I said that. I said that first. We want to develop your life and your faith yeah. so that you can show up in the world strong. God bless you. Oh, let me say this before we go. Watch your life today and look at what's happening because there could be signs of transition happening and you've been ignoring them. So be sensitive today. Be sensitive to the spirit of God. Be sensitive to the presence of God and get on it. If, he, if it's transition time, position yourself for transition and know that it's all really it's always transition time. God's always trying to take you from one degree of glory to the next. Always. And so be ready for it, prepare for it. So when you get there, you'll be able to handle it. Yeah. God bless you all. We love you guys. We will talk with you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Peace.